What is the best way to set up your e-commerce business? Many sellers I talk to regret not having set up their business properly from the outset. And if you take shortcuts here, it often results in verification horror stories like my own or winds you up in a position where you're actually leaving money on the table. So having done this myself and helped dozens of sellers do the same, I thought, let me package up everything I've learned into this one ultimate setup for e-commerce sellers tutorial. This will cover the full business foundation I would want to prepare for any e-commerce business, but with a specific focus on what I would want to prepare before opening an Amazon seller account, where to sell, whether you need a company or not, how to set up bank accounts in every currency, how to select the four names in your business and much more. And if you're feeling generous, drop us a quick like, but let's begin with step one, choose your market. Where you choose to sell is an important first step because it has implications down the road. Now, Amazon currently has 19 marketplaces, as you can see here, with rumors that my home country, South Africa, may be the 20th in 2023. But when you do sign up, it's best to sign up for what's known as a unified account. And that's going to give you access to multiple marketplaces within a region. The most notable are North America. That's going to include the USA, Mexico and Canada and the European unified account. And that one's going to include all of these markets. I recommend choosing one of those two unified accounts to start. Once you have decided where to start, the next step is to choose your entity. Do you need a company to sell on Amazon? Well, in one sentence, what you actually need is an entity based in an Amazon accepted country. What is an entity? Well, one of two things, either a person or a company. So the question of whether you need a company or not to sell on Amazon actually comes down to where you live. These are the Amazon accepted countries for seller registration in North America i.e. where the entity needs to be based. And thankfully, Amazon has added 85 countries to this list, bringing the total to 188 countries. And in this statement, that entity thing becomes clear. You shall only be permitted to register if you can show that you have a business establishment or residency in one of the countries listed below. Therefore, if you live in one of these countries, then you yourself are an entity in an accepted country and you have the option to start selling on Amazon as an individual, as yourself, AKA a sole proprietor or sometimes called a sole trader, in essence, without a company. On the flip side, of course, if you don't live in one of these countries, then you do not have an entity in an accepted country but you can make one by setting up a company in an accepted country. Now, the one thing I do want to say is even if you do live in an accepted country, there are a lot of benefits to actually setting up a company. So don't discard that option just because of this. Another note is that these lists of accepted countries do differ per region. For example, I showed you North America, but here is the list for Europe and Asia Pacific and Middle East. And you can pause at those intervals or better yet, check the links I've left below this video. Really key is that you're probably gonna wanna sell across different markets and regions in the future. Therefore, if you are setting up a company, it's best to set up a company in a country accepted on many of these lists because then you can easily expand that company's reach in the future. For example, a company registered in the US or UK can sell on any of these. And even if you are not a resident of the country you want to set up your company in, for example, the US or UK, you can very often still set up your business's company and bank account there. For example, you can set up your own limited company and bank account within the UK using Osome. Osome will handle your entire company registration process, all the complex, boring paperwork and set up your company's bank account so that you can get trading. And as a partner of the channel, if you use the link below this video, they'll do all of that for 12 pounds. And a very big thank you to Osome for sponsoring this video. But if you want to jump across the pond, you can actually do the same with a different company called Klemta. They'll set up your LLC and business bank account in the US, also linked below. Once you have chosen your entity, it's time to set up bank accounts. The key here, Amazon wants your bank account linked on Seller Central 
to be based in a country that is supported by the Amazon currency converter. Here you can see all of the countries and currencies supported for Amazon payouts so that you can receive your payouts after making sales on Amazon. So if your bank account is supported, that's fine. You can just link it to all of your marketplace accounts and you will receive disbursements, but this is not the best. That's because you see this message here, well, most skip over that, but it's actually a very big deal. Not having control over when or how your proceeds are converted between currencies is kind of like buying all of your groceries at the gas station convenience store. Sure, it's quick and easy and convenient, but it is much more expensive than doing the same at the supermarket. Using that analogy, I'm gonna show you this supermarket method. Here is the key sentence for this part. You always want to receive your Amazon payout in the local currency and you want to control when that currency is converted. Many Amazon marketplaces use different currencies. Just the North American Unified account uses three. So you actually want to have three different receiving accounts, one for each currency. And this might sound complex, but really once your company and bank accounts in supported countries are set up, this is actually quite simple. What you need is a multi-currency account. That's what I'm calling it. So it's a service, but it's a multi-currency account. And there are many options. I'm gonna give you four of them in a moment, but here is how they work. First, you need to choose your multi-currency account service, but then you're gonna onboard your company. You've already got your company and bank account. You're gonna onboard both and link that bank account to your multi-currency account. Then you're going to request or add your needed currency accounts, your different receiving accounts like GBP, USD, Euro, etc. Those currency accounts are generated and they are actual current accounts. Let's use an easy example. It could be any country, but let's say you have a UK limited company and you have a UK Lloyds British pound account. That's your primary. You've now created these other currency accounts. So for your UK limited company, you now also have a Wells Fargo USD account in the US and a Royal Bank Canadian dollar bank account in Canada, all for your UK limited company. So now you have all your needed currency accounts all accessible in your multi-currency account. The next step is to actually log into Seller Central for each marketplace. For example, in this case, you'd log into Seller Central US and you're going to add your Wells Fargo USD bank account from your multi-currency account. You're going to add that to Seller Central US. Amazon will not know it's part of the service. They just see a Wells Fargo USD account and that Wells Fargo account is under your UK limited company name. So makes perfect sense. Of course, you could also add this during the sign up process. Either way, these multi-currency account services are adept at providing verification documents. So if you're asked for a bank statement, for example, they have something called a letter of ownership and these work very well. Once all of that is set up, you can now receive all your disbursements in the local currency for all your different Amazon markets because you have current accounts under your company's name for each currency all accessible through your multi-currency account. So now that your proceeds are all accruing in these different currency accounts, what are the benefits to this? Why would you wanna do this? The first is that if you're paid out $1,000, you receive $1,000. It's not being exchanged when the exchange rate's terrible or at an adjusted exchange rate, you're keeping more of your money. Secondly is that you can now log in to your multi-currency account and exchange that currency when the rate is good or withdraw it to your primary bank account, let's say your UK Lloyds account, when you wish. And most of these services focus on providing you very competitive exchange rates. So it means you're reducing currency exposure and you're keeping more of your money and this makes a huge difference over time. The next big benefit here is that some of these accounts are gonna allow you to pay beneficiaries directly in any of the currencies you hold. What that means, for example, with our UK company, UK bank account, but we've made a whole lot of sales on Amazon US and have USD sitting in USD in our multi-currency account. Now what we can do is we can use that USD to pay Alibaba suppliers directly in USD 
And you'll notice how that USD, Amazon multi-currency supplier, never converted. It stayed in USD. Whereas if we didn't have the multi-currency account, Amazon's going to pay out our USD by converting it into British pounds. We've got it in the British pound account. And now we need to convert it again to pay suppliers, GBP, back into USD. And so you are losing out twice in that equation. Whereas the multi-currency, it's never converted. That's how they work and the benefits. So here are some options. Pay in year. This was the first one I used. The pros, very wide acceptance with onboarding. So if you're struggling to onboard with others, maybe because of your country or currency, try pay in year because they accept most countries. Huge range of currency support. And they have business and personal accounts, but you would need a business account in this instance and the cons. So this one is less exchange rate focused than the others. You're still benefiting massively because you're not converting that currency, but it has less like rate alerts, things like that. And perhaps one of the bigger ones here is that you can only directly pay other payoneer beneficiaries. For example, unless your supplier has payoneer, you're not going to be able to pay directly from payoneer to their account. The next one here is world first. The pros, very wide range of currency support, heavily exchange rate focused with lockable exchange rates and the ability to pay non-world first beneficiaries directly. For example, from your world first balance in whichever currency, it's a USD, you can pay supplies directly. Cons, there is less country support than pay in year. They are more picky with who signs up and this one is also no longer available to US residents. Then we have OFX. This is a newer one to me, but the pros. Heavily exchange rate focused again. You can also set exchange rate alerts. And similarly to World First, you can also pay non-OFX beneficiaries directly. The cons here, the one thing I would say is with World First, you can easily add other currency accounts. With OFX, you do need to request those. It's not a huge deal, but you do need to request each currency account that you need upon sign up. And a last mention, I have not used this one, but I heard about it from a member of the channel that is called Air Wallex. But between those four, I think you will be able to find a suitable one for your business. Of course, I will link all of them below for you. But once your company and your bank accounts are all set up, the next big step is to plan your business names. And sellers often do become confused with all the different names you have to choose for your business. And some of these are also needed during sign up. So you do want to have them sorted. But here are the main ones. First, you have your legal company name slash business name, like absolutely anything LLC or limited, depending on where you set up, but it can be anything. This is remember the name of your entity behind the scenes. It's not the name that goes on your products. It's not customer facing. So it really can be anything. Then you have your brand name or brand names. For example, Fit Gear X. Right below that you have your trademark. This is very often a word mark, which means we're trademarking the actual word, often in capital letters. So Fit Gear X. Now that brand name is your trademark and that is the name that is going to go physically onto your products. Even though it's a brand owned by absolutely anything LLC, that is the name that goes onto your products. And so you can see how it does not matter if those differ. Then you have your store name. So this is your name on Amazon. So this is customer facing and that's why it often makes sense that this also be Fitgear X. Just like Nike products, the Nike brand, those products are sold under the Nike store. So think of it that way. Store names are case sensitive. So if you can't get yours in all uppercase, try all lowercase, etc. Lastly, domain name. That is your website's URL like fitgearx.com or fitgearx.net. Pro tip here, the biggest thing is to choose a trademarkable name. Even if you're not doing the trademark right now, you don't want to have a name printed on hundreds of your products that you cannot then trademark. So if you want to learn exactly how to do that, you can check out this video up here. That brings us to the last big step, prepare your documents. Now this video is not meant to cover the actual sign up process. It is meant to cover what you need to prepare before the sign up process. 
But do let me know in a comment below if you do want a part two covering exactly that. Pro tip here is to sign up early. There's always hurdles, unforeseen things, and you don't want to do this at the last minute. The region you choose to sign up for does determine what's required during sign up. So I'm going to leave a link below called Marketplace Requirements so that you can check these for all of them. But looking at North America, and this is the same for Europe, but it says that you need to provide a valid credit card bank account, phone number and tax info and there are other docs you may need to provide. The bank accounts. Now this bank account is your business bank account and it should be in the name of the entity that you signed up to Amazon with. So if you created a company and signed up to Amazon as that company, then this bank account needs to be in that company's name. On the credit card, this can be any chargeable credit card. It does not even need to be under that entity's name. So keep that in mind, but it does need to be one of these types of cards. On the phone number, this must match your sign up entity's location. So if you have a US LLC, then you're going to need a US phone number. But for this, you can also gain a virtual phone number in the US for your business. It's best if it can receive text and calls, but Amazon often does give you the option of either. I'm also going to link a couple of good services for this below. Address. So the address again must be in line with the sign up entity's location. So US LLC will need a US address. If you yourself are not based in the US and you incorporate a US LLC, it is a very good idea to also gain a US registered address for that LLC. And it is usually a part of most incorporation packages, although you can do it afterward. That can create some problems though where things don't match. So the address is something you wanna do from the outset and keep the same throughout. Additionally, if you actually need a physical return address in a certain marketplace, but you are not in that marketplace, you can use a 3PL for this, one that does accept returns and removal orders. And below, I am going to link various registered address services and 3PLs. Tax info. Here, you're going to need to fill out something like a W8 Ben E and traverse some tax interview questions. And just some other documents to prepare and start thinking about. Number one is EIN. This is an employer identification number. Now, if you do want to get ahead of the curve, sometimes Amazon does request this for your company. And you can get this by heading over to the IRS website. I'll drop a link below for you and just following those instructions. Company certificate. So that's another thing you're likely going to need to provide. This is sometimes also called a certificate of incorporation. It's really just a document that says this company exists. Also ready up a copy of your passport and a bank account statement or a letter of ownership from your multi-currency account if you have one of those linked to Amazon. Here are the key things that should match. The entity name when you actually type it in on Amazon during sign up on the actual company certificate and found on the bank account. And those must all match exactly. Another thing that must match is the registered business address as you actually type it in during the sign up process. Also, as you type it in for the bank account, it must also be the same on the bank account statement or letter of ownership and found on the company certificate if applicable. The biggest piece of advice I can give you for sign up is be meticulous, go slow, be patient because even a wrong put comma in an address will delay the process significantly because it's not human beings looking over this, it's software. So a wrong put comma means they don't match. So make sure everything matches exactly. But once you are through verification, you're also going to want to consider setting up a GS1 account for your company. I recommend literally copying and pasting your company details from Seller Central over to GS1. This way, when Amazon goes and looks at your GS1 account, they match exactly. But on GS1, you can then purchase GTINs, Global Trade Identification Numbers. These are more commonly known as UPCs in US or EANs in Europe. Each of these is a code specific to one of your products and it links that product back to your company and brand. And you're going to need one for each product you list on Amazon. As you list on Amazon, you're going to fill this in in the product ID field. Lastly, at this point, you should also be asking two questions. The first one is how much capital do I need for Amazon FBA and what costs can I expect? And the second one is how do I plan my cash flow and inventory replenishment? And I can answer both of those way more thoroughly in these two videos. 
Those are about to come up in the end screen of this video, and I'm going to link them below for you. But you now have an optimized setup for your e-commerce business, particularly for signing up to sell on Amazon. But please do comment below for me about your verification experiences, whether they were good, bad, ugly. I would love to read them below, and I know that they will help a lot of others. If you are looking to incorporate, remember, Osome is offering company incorporation and bank account opening in the UK for just £12. A link to that, everything else that I have mentioned and all related videos are below for you. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. A like is always appreciated and I will catch you in the next video.